Alrighty, here I go again. Time to make another video. So much foolishness going on, I can't even take it. And yeah, I'm making a video while I'm driving because I don't care. <laughs> I got stuff to do. So whether you think I'm misleading you or not, because I'm driving, and ooh, it's symbolic. Shut up. Listen. I'm trying to make this as quick as possible. I'm so... This is another rant video, basically. <laughs> I can't handle the foolishness, man. I can't handle the foolishness. There's so much foolishness going on in the body of Christ, not even the world, because we shouldn't even be judging the world, or, or you know what I mean? There's so much foolishness going on in the body of Christ alone. It's absolutely absurd. All right, most recent, I just, I just got, I added this person because they had a, the only video online on YouTube transvestigating Post Malone. And I was like, oh, great, you know, wonderful. And, and their name is Alpha, God, Omega, whatever. So I'm like, cool, Christian, transvestigating, transvest, you know, transgenders, whatever. Fantastic. That's, you know, that's what I want to learn about. And I haven't checked out any of their other videos, really. Um, except I just, you know, randomly checked my YouTube and saw this, boop, they had a new video pop up and I actually didn't even recognize the, the user of the channel or whatever, but then I remembered, whatever, I check out the video and the title is what made me click it, because it was like almost clickbait. I thought it was a trick, I thought it was a joke, I thought it was like, you know, no, but I'm just kidding, you know, the actual opposite's true and the title of the video was... Uh, before marriage, live with the person for one year. You know, that was the title. Of the message. That was the title of the message, and I literally laughed, you know, because I'm like, oh man, this is clickbait. Whatever. I click it and I listen, and and they were kidding. They didn't. Ah, just kidding. No, no, it's biblical. To, no, on the contrary, this person said they know it's not popular. They know that's not true. It is popular to live with someone for a long time before you get married these days. Come on now. It's been like that way for a while. But, uh, she, she said, I know it's not gospel. Now, right when she said that right there, I should have just went, bloop, and turned it off. But, you know, I'm a curious little cat. I gotta find out what's, what's up. You know, I'm here to discern, especially in the body of Christ. What's up? What was this about? <laughs> So she's talking and she's talking and the whole time she's talking, I mean, it's, all, it's not a long video, very short. She said, based on her experiences, you know, we need to, uh, we need to be careful with who we marry because uh, not just six months live with them, for a year live with them. She emphasized one year, like, like it matters, I don't know, like one year, you could fool someone for a year, I mean, oh gosh. I'm going to have to make this more than one video because this is already longer than I want to go. So live with somebody for one year before you get married to protect yourself and your children. Red flag, red flag. So immediately, you know, she's speaking to women and then she flipped it and said, oh, but men need to do this too because her she shared the story of her brother and what her brother experienced in his marriage and how after they got married, he spied on her phone and saw that she was talking to a couple of males and blah, 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 boo, hoo, hoo. You know, so we need to be careful and do some detective work. Spy on your partner and blah, 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 blah. And it was just like, it was enough to just make me just, I, I couldn't stop laughing for a while. Let me put it that way. Like literally, it was funny to me. I was in a funk this morning Sometimes I wake up in funks with crappy dreams, whatever, the enemy attacks, blah, blah, blah. I took a nice cold shower, I was in a better mood, and then I, and then I find that YouTube video, and it made me in even a better mood, because I started laughing, you know, a lot. Because I, what a joke. It's a joke. Now, how can you put that as a name? God, Alpha, Omega, blah, 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 blah. Call yourself a Christian, follow of Christ. And then talk about how you need to live with a person, but then also saying you need to be sexually pure throughout that time of living with... I'm sorry, but how 
on earth do you expect to be sexually pure living with the opposite sex for a year? It's garbage nonsense. Garbage nonsense. It's ridiculous. It's absurd. It's mind-blowing. And then, you know, I commented because I couldn't help myself. I go, ha I thought you were joking. And then, you know, she proceeds to say that 50% of marriages end in divorce and I'm just trying to stop some people from going through the heartache of divorce and blah, 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 blah. What a hero, right? Ooh, what a hero for Christ. Man! It's like I got, I was hap- I was, I was laughing, so I was happy and whatever, but I was also sad and like blown away at the stupidity. And the, uh, I was going to say idiocracy. That's like from the movie. But the idiocy, uh, live with them for a year? What is this? Like, next thing you know, it's just going to say, think like a man. You want to be with a man, you want to think like a man. Like, what's that freaking Steve Harvey? You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, come on. Number one, you're promoting someone to not trust their partner. All right, listen. I do not promote living with a person before you get married. That's stupid. I, being a man, believe in preparing a place for your partner to come to. That's A pastor preached this to me, and I think he's correct. That's equal to or better than what they're used to, what what your partner is used to, whatever. You, as a man, it's your responsibility to prepare that place. Otherwise, what business do you have trying to support a woman? As a leader, as the head of the woman, the head of man is Christ, the head of the woman is man. As the leader in the relationship, it's your responsibility. You're taking them away from their father. Therefore, it's your responsibility to provide for her as bet as good as or better than her father. Now, whatever. It's tough. I know it's tough because I'm poor. And that's a difficult pill to swallow. So it's like your your next step then is get to work, save some money, bust some butt, do what you got to do to get where you need to be to provide for another human being. So whatever. Anyways. 50% of marriages end in divorce. Blah, 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 blah. I, I go, I, my second comment was, you know, all right, don't you think that most people today are practicing this? Living with a partner? Before they get married? Yes, they are. I'm sorry, but everywhere I go, people are living together, they're not married. Oh, I live with my boyfriend. Oh, I live with my girlfriend. Boyfriend and girlfriend are not in the Bible, by the way. It's always courting to, on the way to marriage, courting. It's good for a man not to touch a woman. Anyways, uh, blew my freaking mind. Blew my mind. And then she responds with some passive-aggressive, like... You know, phony baloney Christian nonsense. Ah, well, it's just my experience. I'm trying to, you know, again, this hero crap. I'm trying to stop people from experiment, experiencing heartbreaks. Just my my experience. Man, I wanted to say more, but I said, you know, I'm just going to leave it at that. I said enough already. I'm not here to just argue with people, debate with people. Again, I found it so absurd, it was funny to me. But I sensed the spirit of Jezebel. Now, we don't know the full story. We don't know the full story. We don't know the guy's story. We don't know her full story and what she experienced in the relationship she had or whatever. But just coming off of what she was saying, I said, you know what I'm saying? It sounds like you're hurt. Hurt people don't give the best advice. Period. Point blank. Blah, blah. You know, that's it. That's all I have to say. But I sense that spirit of Jezebel, man. This like, oh, you know, she said... It takes more than six months for for you to uh, get to know the real person after they stop kissing your butt. Blah 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 blah. <laughs> Look, man. More than anything, we have to have a mind to discern. And starting off a relationship out of distrust is not good. Now, I believe in inspecting what you expect, but I don't believe in going behind somebody's back, snooping and sneaking and sniping. And She said, follow them. See where they go after they go to the club. Red flag. What are you doing getting someone who's going to the club? Are you a Christian? No wonder you can't find a decent human being. Going to the club? Spying on someone who's going to a club? 
Red flag, beam immediately. You're after the wrong sort of person. They're at the club. Christ is not in the club. It just blew my mind. It blows my mind how freaking ridiculous. And ri oh, how ridiculous. I'm trying to keep my language clean here. Some people can be. But in reality, it's just because they're hurt. They're hurt. Now, I know that she has children already because she said, you know, you have to be careful who you put around your children. So she was in a relationship before, you know, she's probably not Christian forever, like the rest of us had a life before that and messed up, probably have some children. I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. But if you have children outside of wet marriage, wedlock, whatever, already you're you're wounded. You're wounded. You're operating in hurt. You haven't healed. You should the last thing you should be doing is looking for a man. And that's what you did. You looked for a man in haste, ate up every compliment and gentleman thing he gave you without trying the spirit, testing the spirit, not spying, testing. All you got to do is ask a couple real questions. All you got to do is do a couple things in realness and see how they react or see how they respond or whatever. You don't have to be all deceptive. All this. That's not of God. Now, you, she said it herself. This is not gospel. Bam! Red flag! Why would anybody listen to this woman's advice that is a Christian? Makes zero sense to me. Zero. So, I think that person should just stick to transvestigation, stop giving advice. See, the problem with us is we tend to branch out of our gifts. We start off one thing, which is our gift, and then we'll branch out into these other areas. I know this one lady on YouTube, man, she's really good at... at I don't want to say prophesying, you know, because I don't believe, like, whatever. I don't think that's all that important. She's really good at teaching, that's better, teaching prophets or teaching followers of Christ, you know, what's up, you know, what to look for if, you, if you're a true believer of Christ, what, what, you know, what it should look like if you are a true believer of Christ, what your church should look like, what your pastor should look like, whatever. That's her gift, teaching. Now she started branching off into health, like, why every Christian should eat cabbage. You know, that was her latest video. Which, I like cabbage, you know, but I like sauerkraut the most, not cabbage. Cabbage is kind of uh, but, but, you know, she had this one video, why every Christian should eat garlic. Red flag, red flag for me. Now, I've always been into health my entire life. And there's a doctor by the name of Dr. Bob Beck that talks about how garlic is a poison. How it crosses the blood-brain barrier, and that's not good. How you can rub it on your foot, and shortly after, within seconds, you'll taste it. After rubbing it on your foot, that not being good. Now, you know, I've always agreed with him. Because he also said that they used to rub garlic on the tips of their bullets back in World War I. Because if garlic gets into your bloodstream, it'll kill you. Just like with snake venom. You can eat snake venom and not die, like all these, some of these wackadoo Holy Spirit churches, you know. Not all churches are of the Holy Spirit now. There's a false Christ spirit, there's a kundalini spirit going around. Anyways, another teaching, <laughs> another video. Um, you can swallow snake venom and not die. Asians do it, you know, whatever. If it gets into your bloodstream, you're screwed. You'll die. You know what I'm saying? So I've always looked at garlic as a poison because I was raised with garlic. I'm getting off here, but I was raised with garlic. I'm, you know, I'm a spick. I'm a Hispanic. And man, we ate some garlic, tostones with garlic all over it. You know, garlic and everything. It's the three things. Sofrito. It's called green peppers, onions, and garlic. Once that gets, starts getting cooking in the, in the house, the whole house smells good. But, you know, they go off of these studies and these studies and studies are showing that garlic kills this and garlic kills that and garlic, 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 great. Swallow garlic, raw, black garlic, and white. Oh my gosh, shut up with the garlic. I disagree, I'm sorry, I disagree with you. Not just me, some other people too. Some people in Ayurveda agree, you know. I, all I ever do is point out to what somebody else already said, you know, who's much more authoritative or experienced or more knowledgeable than I am. So whatever, got off topic. Don't branch out of your, stay in your grace, man. Isn't one thing enough? Isn't your gift enough? Isn't that one little area that you have to bless people with enough? Why do you got to get all into this, like, 
everywhere. Just shut up. Stop. Don't try to control people's diet. Just stay in your grace. Teach the saints. Teach the saints. That's it. You don't got to become a health guru. There's other people for that. There's other teachers for that. More experienced than you, you know. Anyway, so that's what I got to say about that. This lady freaking blew my mind. And I got to end this video and start another one because I didn't even get off on what I wanted to say. Oh, man. It just cracks me up. It, it blows my mind. Before you get married, stay with them for a year. Now, okay, let me give a little bit of my experience because I do have some experience in this area. I was married once upon a time and I lived with this person for quite a long while. I live with them, and when I got born again, not just born again, like, oh, I'm saved, you pray a prayer and you're saved. I got born again of the Holy Ghost. I had an experience that was inexplicable. It's, again, source material for another video. Um, the message I got from the Holy Ghost was this tree is... <laughs> this, this fig tree is, is not bearing good fruit rip it out of the ground, you know, you're living with this woman, you know, you need to stop that, you know, whatever, and what did I do, so that's what I did, I obeyed, so then when that happened, it was powerful, so I, boom, broke up with her, or not broke up with her, but moved out, you know, she moved out, and uh, we tried to do it right, and we did, we did get married, now, we ended up divorcing, and I totally assumed absolutely 100% of the responsibility, because I was the man, I was the head. Now the problem was, I had backslid, and I didn't realize what I was doing, I didn't realize what was going on, because of the weak Christianity we have in the church, because of the false Christ spirit we have in the church, I didn't know any better, I was naive, I didn't know what was what, I didn't know that I was born again in the Holy Spirit, I didn't know what to do next, I didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't know, so what did I do, I started testing what I used to be bound to, seeing if I would be if it would rub off on me the same or whatever, if I would be the same in it. And I started back into it full force. I started smoking weed again full force. I started drinking again full force. And then we got married. And even when we got married, the reception, I didn't drink. Because I knew I wanted to be in my right mind, this and that. It's just little by little, gradually as the marriage progressed, I introduced that crap back into my life. And that's what my downfall became. You open up a creek in the door, the enemy will kick it down full force and invite all his buddies in and tear you up to pieces and that's what he did he got me to throw my own marriage in the trash my biggest regret to date today to date now we lived together before and it didn't make a damn difference it didn't make a bit of a damn difference you can still mess up no matter what you can still mess up that other person that relationship that you know that gift from God you can mess it all up we have free will he can only do so much damage control. You can throw things away that are beautiful and perfect and good. That's why. That's why we need a strong word. That's why we need strength. That's why we need conviction. In the body of Christ, that's why we need judgment. If somebody was there to judge my actions, to ask me what was going on, that's why we need discipleship. All these things are lacking in the church today. We got this fake, false, lovey-dovey, everything's gonna be all right. Get your best life now. Freaking fake Christian Christianity, fake Christ spirit. It's not of God. Anyways, I love you, God bless you. Just, if anything, it's just therapy for me. <laughs> maybe you get something out of it, maybe you don't. I really don't care. I don't do this for nothing but me. I feel better after I make these things. It's, ah, I dumped. But uh, God bless, man. And, and keep your eyes open, man. And man, watch out for these freaking fakey, floozy doozy, hurt Christians that are just, they don't know what the heck they're talking about. They don't have a clue. They're stepping out of their grace. You know, test the spirit. Be have Pray for a mind to discern. Pray for a mind to learn how to discern. You know? We don't just eat everything up men give us these days. Men, women, whatever. You know what I'm saying. That's another thing. If it comes from a woman and she doesn't have a spiritual covering, there you go. They get silly. They get so silly when they don't have a spiritual covering. 
they get silly. That's another red flag. So you're out of a relationship for whatever reason, and you got silly. Oh, man. Stay in the word, man. Stay in the word. It's there for a reason. Uh, but, yeah. Too long of a video. Peace.